Hey guys and gals, boys and girls, authors and author wannabes, hope you're having a fantastic day. Your old buddy Tim back again, as usual, to dispense a little wit, wisdom, and advice on the topic of writing, authoring, agenting, editing, marketing, all those ING words that go along with the topic of uh, writing and selling your own books. Doing something a little different today. Uh, I've got uh, my buddy Dale Roberts is on the program and we're doing a, uh, basically we just had a little chat about the state of things and I recorded it and uh, some goodies came out of that. A few nuggets of gold. Uh, if you don't remember Dale, he's been on the program before. He is an author, a uh, marketer, uh, but he is also my go-to guy when I want to know about things um, along the lines of publishing on demand, paperback books. Dale uh, does a lot on Kindle but he claims to make the bulk of his income, which is pretty sizable, uh, selling paperback books using Create Space. So I thought it would be interesting to have Dale on and just talk about uh, not only the uh, the differences between digital publishing and KDP and paperback publishing, but kind of the state of things uh, in general, because the, uh, the the landscape is changing. Create Space is now owned by Amazon. Uh, Pronoun has gone away. You've got Draft to Digital. You've got Smashwords. And so uh, Dale and I just had a really great chat. So this was uh, kind of a long interview. So you're either going to be seeing part one or part two, depending on what it says right here. Uh, there's about 45 minutes between the two. And I uh, encourage you to start with part one, then go to part two, and it'll all make a lot of sense. So, hey, I hope you enjoy this. Hey, as always, if you like what I do here on the channel, do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button because... I do these all the time, and uh, God forbid you miss this because this is an entertainment value. So click on subscribe, click on the little bell notification icon, and YouTube will let you know when I do this. Also, down in the description below, you're going to find a link to my website. I got it set up now. Finally, people just harping and harping. Uh, you can now go to my website, opt in to my newsletter list, and you can download a free copy of my book, Angel of Mercy, just for doing that. Just to reward you for being so damn smart. I'm going to give you a copy of one of my, my books. So anyway, this is a two-part interview. Uh, you'll see part one or part two right here. But uh, watch these. Dale has a lot of good information. And if you're interested in expanding from just doing KDP to doing real publishing, print-on-demand type stuff. Uh, we even talk about doing self-stocking and self-supplying uh, self, uh, of your own books. So very interesting stuff. All right, sit down, shut up, stop whining, and get ready to watch either part one or part two of my chit-chat with my buddy Dale Roberts. Here we go. Hey, guys, welcome to the channel. Tim Knox here along with my old pal, my old buddy, my bestie, my BFF, who uh, can make those faces and get away with it because he's so damn good looking. Dale Roberts. Dale, what's up, man? You know flattery will get you everywhere with it. You me. know what? what? Behind your back, you're known as the man of a thousand rubbery faces because you can do shit with your face that should not be allowed. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. So uh, what's going on with you, buddy? Uh, you know, I just, just been a busy day. I got up uh, fairly early uh, after staying up pretty late uh, trying to figure out this new iPhone and getting it working with my uh, MacBook Pro. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm just kind of <laughs> running on fumes at this point. I already <laughs> have my workout in, got my uh, coffee in my system. So I'm ready to rock and roll and yeah. talk, good, yeah, talk good luck, shop with yeah. you. Good luck with the iPhone. I told you right before we started recording, I actually bought an iPhone. I kept it for about 15 minutes and gave it to my daughter. I'm like, I, I'm an Android guy. I can't help it. So, um, hey, we're going to do something a little different on the channel yeah. today. Typically, I have uh, these amazingly intelligent, stellar guests such as yourself, and uh, we do a little Q&A, but I thought what we would do today is kind of a, uh, just a chit-chat, if you're up for such a thing, because so much is going on in the world of uh, publishing on demand, which you are my resident evil expert at. So I thought we would uh, just come on for a little bit and talk about what's going on with things like pronoun, create space, uh, draft a digital smash words, uh, et cetera, et cetera. How's that? Yeah, that sounds great. You know, it's, it's funny. I, I, it, you and I actually had kind of a private, well, we have lots of private conversations. And uh, you harass me regularly. I, I do. I do. It's literally a day <laughs> doesn't go by. With, I'm like, gosh, I haven't met, met my quota here of harassing yeah. this guy and getting him all fired up. 
You know, uh, I just, you know, you, you mentioned you were like, yeah, you're, you're kind of my Kindle publishing expert. And I'm like, you watch your mouth <laughs> because, you know, I, I look at the, the entire self publishing business and to me, right. Kindle publishing is almost like my side dish. It, yeah. it does get me some significant income. I won't lie, but I tell you that the greater amount of income lies over in print books. And that's where you and I kind of start talking about it. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, create space is awesome to me. It's, we, it treats the, uh, how, the Roberts household really well. Well, you know what? The, the funny thing is, though, is you, you're kind of going against the grain because most people are preaching making money with KDP. Yeah. You know, but Jesus, Joseph, and Mary, Amazon seems to make it increasingly more difficult for authors uh, to even make money with digital books on their platform. The, the K&P is always changing. The mm -hmm. rules are always changing. You and I have had this conversation before. It's, mm -hmm. you know, you make money with eBooks in marketing. You know, that's where, because you and I both know there are a lot of crappy books making a lot of money. So mm -hmm. you are one of the guys who, who literally is saying you got to go against the grain, which is an Emeka Osai favorite quote. Uh, and that's kind of what he does. He, he does eBooks, but he's focusing more on publishing on demand. And, and so that's what I want to talk about because I think a lot of authors yeah. are under the impression that if you are not putting it on Kindle and you're not doing KDP and you're only doing eBooks, you're really, you know, you're missing the boat. But uh, to hear you tell it and others now, uh, publishing on demand with CreateSpace and those kind of platforms is actually bringing in more revenue than you are seeing with KDP. But let, let's clarify because you do primarily nonfiction, right? I, I'm primarily uh, nonfiction heavy. I have a little bit of fiction that I had ghostwritten uh, back in like 2015. Mm -hmm. Do, uh, do been a couple think, of years. Do you think that is one of the reasons you make more money doing uh, paperbacks than you do on uh, Kindle? I guess that argument could be made. Um, yeah, I, I would say a lot of, and this, this is cumulatively, I, I hate to speak on Kelly's behalf, but I know that Kelly as well. Kelly, your uh, wife. Heavily, yeah. Kelly, my wife, heavily, um, a lot of ours is nonfiction based uh, mm -hmm. sales. Um, but it's also... You know, a lot of people try to, this is one of the biggest mistakes that some people do, and hopefully I don't rabbit trail you too much, is too many people focus on shotgunning everything mm -hmm. under the sun. And if you just focus on one thing and really try to perfect that model as you go along and then scale what works and pull back what doesn't, then you'll probably be able to get the same results as us. It still is possible to make a lucrative living selling fiction print books because there still is a demand. And in fact, the Association of American Publishers released a report this past month that said still 70%, over 70% of global publication profits are derived from print books. That's hardback and paperback altogether. And they're not showing any signs of letting up. If there is one media that is selling more significantly lately, it's actually audiobooks. So if yeah. anybody gets excited about anything, get excited about audiobooks because they've seen a 32% increase in global profits over the past year. 32% increase. And before that, it was a 25% increase. So it looks like audiobook. If you're going to get excited about anything here, folks, get yourself all excited about audiobooks. I'm telling you, if you're going to be like, if you're going to be an early adopter of anything, Stop paying attention to Kimmel Publishing. Start paying attention to audiobooks. And if you want the long-term business strategy, print books aren't going anywhere. We are yeah. material human beings. We want to have things in our hand. We want to share with people. And soft copies just ain't going to cut the mustard. Yeah. You know, I, th I think it not only depends on, on the genre, be it fiction, nonfiction, and then all the genres that are underneath there. I think it depends on the habits of the reader. Because like you, when I find a book that I like, I want a hard copy. I want to hold that book in my hand. It's a tangible thing. But then you have what, what someone like Michael Anderley calls whale readers, which are the readers that will download a hundred, uh, you know, romance or sci-fi books to their Kindle and just whale read their way through them. So I think there's, but even those folks, I guarantee you, they still buy some paperback books now and then. So I think it is important to, to kind of make that uh, delineation between fiction and nonfiction. But I do agree with you. I think the, the market for both of those is still very large uh, in print. So let, let's talk about the, the players in the game now because so much has happened, Dale, in the last 
month or so uh, with uh, Create Space. Amazon now owns Create Space, so they're changing the game there. Uh, Pronoun has uh, died a, a, a timely death. You've still got Smashwords, and of course, our, our favorite platform, Draft the Digital, doing very well. But oh, yeah. let's talk about the changes going on. First off, um, what's going on with Create Space now that Amazon? has has taken them over things kind of seem to be changing a little bit yeah it's it's definitely going through some changes so i think it's been about 30 days now that uh create space pulled the e-store function and distribution channel that you would normally get and that actually used to be the most lucrative option when it came to create space did i get many sales through that no but i did guide a lot of my email list to the Create Space eStore for the fact that I could incentivize them with these great coupons. They would buy it almost at the same price, if not a little less than what they would in the Amazon store, but I would profit more. Sadly, Create Space pulled that option. It's no longer available. You can't put in a coupon or anything else like that. So you have to start sending your people over to the larger distribution channels of Amazon.com, so European. Okay, so what you're talking about, formerly when you put your book on CreateSpace, CreateSpace mm -hmm. had their own store uh, yeah. where people could actually go to CreateSpace to buy your book. And yep. you had more control over your book in that store. Well, now Amazon is saying, look, we don't need that. We've got Amazon over here. We own you, CreateSpace. Let's bring it all together. So the CreateSpace store or e-store went away, and that did take away some of the options you have as an author. Yeah, it really did. And actually, I think that that stripped most of us of our independence. Uh, mm -hmm. Most, And it's a, it's a surefire sign that Amazon ain't your friend. They're not here to be like, hey, we're supporting indie publishing. No, they're supporting their bank accounts and Jeff Bezos getting richer by the day. Got so it. don't think that they're going to be keeping CreateSpace eStore open if they know that they're not getting as much out of that relationship right. as they could. So they probably killed the option. And I don't know that too many people are aware of that, 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 that function and how you could have used that. A good friend of mine, and I don't think he minds me shouting him out, would be Scott J. Marshall II. I had shared with him, I would say a little less than a year ago, the whole process of CreateSpace eStore and sending his email list over there and creating a coupon code to where he could profit more by sending them to the eStore and he was like, wow, I never knew about this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he'd already been in the business for some time. So uh, it, it's just maybe sometimes people probably didn't know about it. So CreateSpace is like, well, no one's going to notice this missing. I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you make a really good point. Amazon is a business. You know, and, and hell, I'm an old entrepreneur. I can't fault them for making every nickel they can. But, yeah. you know, you, you talk about authors who think Amazon is their friend. A Amazon is a sales platform. Mm -hmm. Amazon is going to do what's best for their, for Amazon and for their customers. If, as an author, you're just a, a product provider. You know, Kevin Tumlinson and I, uh, since we're in name drop mode here today, uh, had a conversation <laughs> about, you know, Amazon isn't, isn't your pal. Amazon is there to sell books. And that's why you see a lot of authors who are um, losing their accounts, having their accounts shut down, uh, having all kinds of issues. And it's like I keep saying, Dale, Amazon seems to do everything it can to make it difficult for authors. And, you know, I don't think a lot of people are going to notice the Create Space store gone. Uh, unless they were using it for marketing purposes like you. But I uh, yeah. find it very interesting, though. But uh, CreateSpace, you know, now they're, they're an Amazon company, and you just got to keep that in mind. Um, you know, n no one's looking out for you. This is a business. If you want a hug, go to your mom's house, you know, or wherever you get yeah. your hugs. Um, let's talk about the alternatives to, to CreateSpace because, you know, they, I like Create space. I have used it for many years. It makes publishing on demand so damn easy. You know, I come from the old world, Dale, where uh, before Amazon and Create Space, if you wanted a paperback, you either had to try to get a publisher or you did what they called vanity pressing, yeah. meaning that you, you basically went to a publisher and paid a buttload of money to have a bunch of books published. Yep. And you would have to buy like a thousand at a time. And so Create Space really started the the print on demand option where and that's a great thing as an author you're not having to put a ton of dough you don't have to buy a thousand books 
You put up a link, yeah. people will go buy your book. Amazon keeps their parts, you get your share. Uh, let's talk a little bit about alternatives because uh, Macmillan, which is a huge publishing company, uh, launched a service a while back called Pronoun, which yep. was print on demand. And I know you were using Pronoun, but uh, Macmillan announced in the last month or so they've, <clears throat> excuse me, shut that service down. Uh, were you doing anything on Pronoun? What are your thoughts on the death of Pronoun? Uh, pronoun was actually, it was not print on demand. That actually was an ebook based service. Oh, okay. My mistake. Uh, that, you know, no, 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 it, it, that's okay. You're it's a an distribution aggregate. company. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, and I tell you what, uh, it, it was funny. I kind of feel uh, badly about this in, in a big way about to our friends at Draft to Digital. Um, and Kevin was always really cool here. I dropped that name too. My buddy, Kevin Tumlinson, <laughs> director of marketing at Draft to Digital. What's that uh, taste like? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but you know, uh, I, I'd actually really got behind pronoun cause I really liked the, I liked the formatting, the interior formatting it was really cool. The keywords, uh, the category choice, just the entire layout was impeccable. They had only been up for about two years mm -hmm. and, um, they had distribution to some areas that I couldn't otherwise get Google play, which Let's double back around to that because I want to share something on your channel that hopefully your viewers are going to really appreciate about Google Play. So let's make sure we come back to that shelf for just now. Pin it. Okay. Um, we're going to put a pin in that one. So here we go. Um, pronoun though, uh, man, they, for the longest time, I couldn't figure out how they were making money. They literally were just supporting the indie author. And, you know, it's, it's all well and good to be charitable and to have a good heart for people and do art for the sake of art. But if you aren't paying for your overhead, something's got to give at some yeah. point or another. Yeah. And that was the issue with pronoun. And I think Macmillan, you know, being a large publishing house looked at this and was like, uh, we're losing money here. Yeah. Why would they even start such a service? I am just blown away and see they, that was their whole thing was they're all about the author. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just so funny that probably two months prior to their announcement of, their departure from the self-publishing industry, um, drafted digital released their exemplary interior formatting. Uh, it is so cool. And if you haven't had the opportunity, I highly recommend just go in there. You don't have to publish your drafted digital to use the interior formatting. It is so freaking cool. Mm -hmm. I love it. I can sit here and play with that all stinking day long. <laughs> and that's what really won me over to draft the digital go figure pronoun comes along was like, Dale Roberts doesn't like our interior formatting anymore. We're second best. We're closing the house. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, pronoun, it, it was really sad to kind of hear things going. So anybody that's watching this that tries to set up an account, you, you know, they aren't taking any, any new accounts. They're not taking any new uploads. Yeah. And by mid-January, they're closing down all accounts. Yeah. And I'm bummed because I won't lie to you. I was actually making a significant amount of money per month through the pronoun publishing platform. But I've found some alternatives. Yeah. Well, again, I, I'm not quite sure why a company like Macmillan or hell, why anybody would really launch something like that to kind of go head to head, you know, with, with Amazon in, in ebook distribution. But um, let's talk about uh, the other companies that are doing this. You mentioned uh, draft to digital Our buddy Kevin Tumlinson is involved there. Mark Coker over at Smashwords who uh, really like Mark. He's a guy that, I mean, he takes this stuff seriously and he has statistics for everything that's i told uh, mark that you and i had a conversation and decided that uh smashwords had too damn much documentation and he needed a good editor and he, he agreed with us obviously but uh talk a little bit about let's let's just start with drafted digital we've we've talked about them before on this this channel i've had uh kevin on to talk about it but um talk about how you are using drafted digital and what you're getting out of that you know, it's it's funny uh, for Draft to Digital, and I even shared this with Kevin in his interview, and uh, even in in private. That <laughs> I hate to say this, but I don't really use Draft to Digital for more than interior formatting at this point, mm -hmm. and as well distribution. I think to Playster and one other um, might be Biblioteca or something like that. Uh, nonetheless, though, I don't use it much. So I get probably pocket change best during the course of the month. So uh, Smashwords actually is, is the aggregate publisher I stand behind. I might gripe about their... Um, gripe? Gripe? Yeah. <laughs> Mark, look, buddy. Oh, we gotta, I we, we, Mark agreed. I'm going to come in here, Mark. <laughs> we got to have a talk here, buddy. All right? Love your, love your platform. You guys pay me well. I love it. But good Lord, please, please, please 
<laughs> I, uh, you know, I love you know, Smash you, Words. You, well, you know why it's like that because Mark, like me, is Mark. Mark's an old tech guy, an old software. I think he was actually like a nuclear engineer or something, or maybe that was Dave Chesson. He's very uh, cerebral. He's he, very he, cerebral. He is, and uh, but yeah, I mean, he's. It's very in depth. It's almost like a technical document, you know. But still, uh, the, the bottom line is most people don't read FAQs anyway. <laughs> so it really, it really <laughs> doesn't do. matter, <laughs> you know, but, uh, well, so are you, are you doing all of your paperback through create space? I'm doing all my, uh, through create space and I'm using, uh, I just started testing out KDP since earlier this year. I probably have about 15 paperbacks on there. And I'm going to say this, that, uh, right now about a third of my income on KDP's platform is derived from paperback sales, which is kind of funny because, you know, obviously you would think it would be the eBooks, but it's actually the paperback distribution. So I'm pretty excited about the paperback distribution on KDP. The direction that I'm heading into is going to be, of course, uh, someone from your native uh, state there, Tennessee. Um, is, Alabama. Yeah. Uh, Tennessee's up there. Ah, oh, dang it. Aren't you guys in the same state? Well, it's the same. It just yeah. Uh, so in Tennessee, uh, Ingram Spark, uh, Ingram Spark is a, is a good quality company. Um, a lot of people kind of really get all you know clenched butthole about this, where they're just kind of like, oh, I've got to pay a setup fee. Yes, you've got to pay a setup fee. But yeah. here, th this just in, this just in. You guys want to hear this? I did. A, I went to a, a recent um, seminar that they ran down in Cincinnati. This is going to be good through the rest of the year. It's 2017. So if you're watching this, 2018 is probably not good. Get published, all one word, get published, all caps. It can be worked once and you can waive the setup fee. Uh, I, that's not an affiliation. I don't get any kickbacks to that. I just want to tell you guys, they, they're like, this, this code's good to the end of the year. And that, um, that's but, with Ingram Sparks? And that's with Ingram Spark. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it, everybody, for some reason, they always got to put the S on there. There's no Sparks. It's that's, what we, that's what we do. I'm in Alabama. We drop our Gs. We add an S. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. Our, our boy Mecca says Ingram Sparks too, and he now he just says it just grind my gears. Well, what's I'm really like, funny is my uh, my ninety year old mom. She calls Walmart Walmarks. So you know, it, it's a genetic thing here. I mean, if you sleep with enough cousins, this is how you talk. Um, <laughs> so In Ingram Spark yeah. Spark, um, they they haven't always let authors go direct, have they? Where, oh, yeah. where have you always had the ability to go directly because they're the ones that uh, do the, the mass distribution, the libraries and bookstores and what have you. And they, they have distribution uh, not only through paperback, but they also have an ebook as well. And I would highly recommend if you end up doing, if you end up publishing to Ingram Spark, uh, do both of them at the same time because it's going to cost the same. You can do $49 for an ebook or you can do $49 for an ebook and a paperback. Okay. The big issue that you're going to run into is you're going to have to get an ISBN ahead of time. Uh, and that's the what, international book standard number. Standard book number. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah. Like Which I, I never, I don't understand why we have to pay for those here yeah. in the United States. They're free Canadians got it, got it good up there. They get it free. Yeah. They just like, Hey, I'm a business owner. Give me an ISBN. Yeah, it's just, and it's they have nuts. it. So why, why go with, uh, with Ingram Spark if you're doing it through CreateSpace KDP? What's the benefit of going both places? This is wholeheartedly why I believe um, with Amazon not being your friend. Now, I'm not saying Ingram Spark is going to be uh, <laughs> yeah, any, any different, yeah. you know, but um, what I would recommend is diversifying uh, and testing out. See what works for you. Ultimately, your end goal as a self-publisher needs to be getting the people, get those customers that are Amazon customers, that are Ingram Spark customers, that are CreateSpace customers, get them off that platform and over into yours. Because yeah. if you can privately fulfill those things, you can then go and vanity press your books. You can go buy a garage full of books and not have to worry about it collecting dust and, and being like, you know, just, you know, something that you just wasted money on. It is, yeah. it is possible to do that. In fact, I actually had a, had a great interview with Naomi Van Dorn. I'm going to release that interview in the next couple of weeks. Naomi actually, uh, she fulfills uh, print runs and she, she sells through them because she knows there's a demand for it. And here's the funny thing is she has never, ever had to publish any of your stuff onto any major platforms. She's got it right. That is the way you need to do it is you need to get, use those specific areas of Amazon and, 
you know, Ingram Spark and all those different platforms just as a as leverage, as a marketing tool to elevate your brand awareness and get it to where people go, oh, there's something to this. And as soon as you have everybody's attention, hey, what's happening? Come on over here. This is where the party's at. And guess what? You can buy your stuff over here, but you're going to get it way cheaper over here. And you're also going to be supporting an independent author. So, so you're talking about doing self-fulfillment then at that point where, where you are selling directly off of your website and you are doing the fulfillment yourself and, and hopefully making more money doing it that way than you were the other way. Absolutely. That's, and, and, you know, and I'm, as I'm pointing one finger forward, I got three coming back here at me because yeah. um, I haven't gone in that direction. And unfortunately, yeah. I think you know me by now that I have entirely too many pay, plates spinning at once yeah. that sometimes a few fall in the process. So that particular th- direction is where I'm going in the next year. And um, I'm going to actually be talking a little bit more in depth with Johnny Andrews from Author Platform Rocket, mm-hmm. dropped on that name right there. Uh, about (laughs) helping getting that brand up and going and getting a little bit more strong in in that area. Because, you know, I'm never going to make any grand illusion that I'm some self-publishing expert. I tell people I'm a self-publishing advocate, but I'm not an expert. I've only been in this business for a cup of coffee for for crying out loud. Yeah. You you and I, man, we got the name drop shrapnel everywhere today. Let's see, who haven't we named? Uh, Jesus. No, nope, I said you, Jesus. You said Dave said Chesson. Yeah, you did say, Je- yeah, you did say did. Jesus. You said Dave Chesson. Yeah. You know, let's just throw out another name. Oh yeah. Wait, hang on. You said Chris Fox you, did, did, or was oh, that buddy. before we got on? No, uh, yeah, no, that's it. We, we can say Chris Fox. And I said, Michael Anderley. Uh, God, this, we're just sycophants. It's just kind of, <laughs> <laughs> so I back to, back to the point though of self-fulfillment. I think yeah. you really on the one, you only want to do that once you've got an audience built. Yeah. And you've got the brand built and people like I, I have friends that do that, but they're selling, you know, 10,000 books a month themselves out of their garage. Yeah. And, but you know what? I mean, even if they're, they're having to spend, you know, a couple, two, three dollars a book, you, you got to have some money to invest when you're at yeah. that point. And trust me, as a guy who has boxes of books in closets, be very careful about going to that model until you do have the family or the tribe to support that model. Otherwise you just end up with having a bunch of books in your closet. Yeah. Yeah, like absolutely. Me. Yeah. It's, it, you know, I, I, I made the mistake early on when I had my first book, I went out and bought like 50 copies of it. And true story, by the time I left Arizona a little over a year ago, I uh, had this half a box of books, so it was probably easily 20 to 25 books, and I'm like, I'm not taking this with me. So I went to half price books, seriously. I went to half price books and sold it to them for pennies on the dollar, but the nice thing is I'm actually featuring half price books now. That's funny. (laughs) Well, you know what's really funny is if you, like, we've got that, we don't have half price books here, but we've got a thing called Second and Charles, which is a a books a million company. They're closing down all the books a millions and they're opening these because they do Mm. books and video games and everything. And they do a lot of used books. And so my daughter, who's just this book nut, she has her, her entire bedroom is lined with bookshelves for her books. Um, If you go and you take books to second and Charles, they don't buy them from you, but they credit your account. So I'm like, fuck it, take, take some of those boxes of books. So she's got like $200 in credit based on the books that I probably spent a thousand dollars for, but you know, they're being put to good use. So just, just be careful there. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the uh, sell them one at a time. And, but the, the downside there is the profit margins are not as great as if you're doing self-fulfillment, right? Yeah. We, uh, yeah, for sure. And, and, you know, there's always going to be a middleman. Some people will gripe about it like, oh, I'm being ripped off, you know, through Create Space. I can't believe, expand, uh, this one, like, they, people lose their mind over expanded distribution on Create Space. Listen, folks, I make 20% of my income through Create Space on expanded distribution. It is possible to sell books on expanded distribution and still profit. Is it going to be as pretty and nice as what you do on Amazon? No, but here's the thing is, some money is better than no money. And if you're just like, oh, well, I don't like money. Well, hey, cool. You do art for the sake of art. I'm going to go ahead and do my art that pays the bills and keeps the lights on overhead. Yeah. I keep saying your ego can't pay your house payment. No, Trust I've me, learned that the hard it, way. <laughs> if it could, I'd be living in a freaking better trailer. I got to tell you right now, that was the case. 